Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you all for coming. I would, uh, I want to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to the elders, both past and present. Can you hear me? Because yep. they're a bit sort of interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and to pay my respect to the elders, both past and present, and I want to thank Business Sydney for hosting us tonight. When I was first elected Lord Mayor, there was no vision or strategy for Sydney's growth. And in the 90s, the city had been on the brink of bankruptcy and of being sacked. I led the development of Sustainable Sydney 2030, the first long-term vision and strategy for Sydney since the 70s. Alongside the strategy, I insisted on responsible financial management, and the city has delivered 20 years of services. Our sound financial management ensures high quality services and funds our $2.2 billion 10-year capital works program, which includes such things as community centres, parks, footpaths, our core work. We've done all this while keeping residential rates among the lowest in the metropolitan area and providing free rates for pensioners. And our economy has grown by 82%, and our popula population has almost doubled, and the number of jobs has increased by 162%. Last month, the Sydney Morning Herald reported city retailers are popping the champagne corks as workers return to the city, international tourists and students fly in, and shoppers come back for weekend visits. Vacancy rates have fallen to near pre-pandemic levels. Last financial year alone, we invested over $2.4 million in 41 projects, including $568,000 to local businesses, chambers and precincts to help build capacity and deliver various programs and events, especially after COVID. Apart from our major events like New Year's Eve, the Sydney Lunar Festival, Christmas in the City and more, Hundreds of businesses are involved in our popular Sydney Streets events, uh, which are held all year round now. We've already planned for special entertainment precincts. Our late night trading controls were expanded in 2019 and include much of what the special entertainment precincts are trying to achieve. The only difference is how noise is managed. So I asked the city to bring a proposal to council before the end of the year to consult on making all our late night trading areas special entertainment precincts. These precincts must be supported by public transport operating 24 hours a day. We have a rolling program of street and public domain improvements and greening which make our city vibrant and appealing. This term we completed the upgrade of McKay Street, Potts Point. The upgrade of Crown Street with landscaping, granite footpaths and seating is creating even more space for outdoor dining and for businesses to display their goods. The rejuvenation of Chinatown has started with the restoration of Dixon Street gates and in the northern part of the city the Loftus Street upgrade will start shortly to accommodate the increased activity in the Hunter Street Metro. Light Rail has transformed George Street in the city, enabling us to reclaim over 26,000 square metres of roadway for people and businesses. And we've invested around $300 million in the new footpaths, the trees, the street furniture. This has resulted in $8 billion of private investment. New planning controls for Oxford Street are already encouraging a mix of new developments. The Ash Morgan redevelopment of 12,000 square metres will open from early next year and will include new cultural, creative, retail and hospitality tenants. And the Oxford Street cycleway between College Street and Taylor Square will open early next year with landscaping, new furniture and footpaths. It will be a buffer between the, the traffic and the cafes and encourage outdoor dining so Oxford Street becomes a place for people rather than a traffic sewer. <laughs> Sydney is a global city and studies including from New York, San Francisco and Melbourne show businesses are served by cycleways, they benefit from the increased foot traffic and patronage. Locally, the Committee for Sydney reported that people who walk and cycle visit their high street more frequently, and they spend more money there compared with people traveling in cars. And the architect of the Sydney Metro, Rod Staples, said recently, for Sydney to be fit for future generations, we need to give more people the choice to leave the car at home or not have a car, like true global cities. The first major planning reform in the CBD in nearly 50 years was the Central Sydney Planning Strategy Controls, which have unlocked almost 3 million square metres of employment floor space with approved developments such as the towers on Pitt and Spring Street and O'Connell Street and above the Hunter Street Metro Station. The strategy balances the city's residential development with the need to grow commercial, retail, tourism and cultural floor space so we will remain the economic powerhouse of the country. There are almost 17,500 homes in central Sydney. In the past five years, around 3,200 homes have been built with almost 5,000 in the pipeline. And in other parts of the city, even though housing is primarily a state responsibility, the state's core responsibility 
we are on track to contribute 5,273 new affordable rental homes. Already we've contributed 3,323 3, affordable homes, either built in the pipeline or expected, which is more than any other council in Australia. Our priority is to maximise affordable and social housing. The most effective and responsible way is to do that with the city's levies, grants and discounted land sales, working with community housing providers. They are regulated and must provide housing in perpetuity. They can develop housing for less because they can access grants, cheap loans and tax concessions that councils can't access. And they're not bound by procurement and financial restrictions like councils. So they can build more, and isn't that what we all want? And they can do it and the housing will be in perpetuity. It can't be sold off by a future government or council as it has occurred in the past. Our draft economic strategy focuses on an innovation-led innovation economy which is sustainable, inclusive and provides for great local experiences. The strategy creates opportunity for 200,000 jobs by 2036, with 70% of them in the knowledge and innovation industries, particularly in the southern part of the city. This is a major reason why extending the light rail from Paramount Road to Green Square via Central Station has such enormous economic potential for the whole of Sydney. Every day, more than a million people choose Sydney to work, visit, study and shop, or for culture and entertainment. Our work will keep them coming and keep our city competitive in the fierce global market for talent and tourism dollars. Thank you very much.